Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you what the node editor is in Blender 2.8 and how you can use it to create complex and realistic materials for your models. To start off with we need to go to the shading tab at the top to enter the shader editor workspace. It will automatically change the view render type to the look dev mode, bring up an image viewer space in the bottom left, a file viewer space on the left and the most important part the viewer node space at the bottom. I'm going to switch from look dev mode to rendered mode in the viewport by pressing Z and then rendered. Now the node editor will be a totally blank grid until you create a material, which you can do by either going to the materials tab on the right and clicking new, or by clicking new at the top of the node editor. You can then name it by clicking where it says material.001 here or here. You will notice that as soon as we click new material, some boxes appeared in the node editor. The bigger of the two is the actual material, and by default is a principled BSDF shader node. The smaller box is the actual surface output which is required for any of your materials to show up in the viewport. You can move these nodes by clicking them, pressing G and moving your mouse, or by just clicking and dragging. Shaders in the node editor have inputs and outputs, and the amount of these and what they do vary depending on which shader you're using. The principled shader has lots of inputs and only one output which is common for shaders. Shaders and other nodes can be connected with links. These allow nodes to influence other nodes. For example, by default, the output of the principled shader is linked to the surface input of the output node. To get rid of a link, you can press Ctrl and then right click and drag to use the knife tool and cut a link. To create a link, you can click and drag between the two nodes you want to link. The output of a node can only ever be connected to the input of another node, so you can't connect two inputs together or two outputs together. To start off with creating material, I'm going to show you what textures are in the context of the node editor. To create a new texture node, just press Shift A, click Textures, and then you'll see there's all these different kinds of textures. Each have a different look and can be used to control the input of a shader. For example, you can use one to control the base colour or something more complex like how shiny the material is by connecting it to the roughness. The textures available by default with Blender are Brick, Checker, Gradient, Image, Magic, Musgrave, Noise, Voronoi, and Wave. Each of these is used for a different look, and you can change the settings for most of them, such as the scale or detail. The best way to learn about what they each look like is to just experiment yourself. You'll notice I left out a few of the textures that you'll see in the menu, and the reason for this is that they aren't used for materials, but instead for environments, which is out of the scope of this video. I'm going to show you how to use a noise texture to control the colour of our principled shader. To do this, we first need to press Shift A, then Texture, and then Noise Texture, and then drag the FAC, which is short for Factor Input, to the base color. You'll see that there are two, color and factor. The color input is a multicolored noise, and the factor input is black and white, so I'm going to use factor for this tutorial. You'll see in the viewport that the surface of our object is now black and white, based off our noise texture. We can change the scale by clicking and dragging in the scale field, or by clicking it and typing a set number, and we can change the detail by doing the detail field. We can also change the distortion, although this isn't used very often because it just makes the whole surface look warped. This texture, along with all the other textures shown previously, are procedural. This means that they aren't defined by a traditional raster image file, but instead by a mathematical formula. This allows them to be scaled up indefinitely, with no loss of detail or resolution. For this reason, using procedural textures is often the most versatile way to make a material in Blender or any 3D program. Another main feature of the node editor is the use of mathematical and logical functions that can be performed on textures. I'm going to show you how to use a basic function with this noise texture and a new texture, a checker texture, which I'm going to add with Shift A. I'm going to add the node that performs the function by pressing Shift A, going to Converter and then choosing the Math node. I'm going to change its type from Add to Multiply and then I'm going to connect the factor of the noise into one of the values and the factor of the checker into the other and then the output into the base colour of the principled shader. You'll notice that the link from the math node replaced the link from the noise texture because each input on a shader can only have one link at once. Now our texture is a mixture of the noise and checker texture. The math node works by counting fully white as being 1 and black as 0. So when performing a multiply function, wherever the checker texture is black, it multiplies the noise texture by zero, so the output is always zero, or black. Where it's white, it multiplies the noise texture by one, so it's just whatever the value of the noise texture is. This is a simple version of a mathematical function in the node editor, 
but you can have any number of complex functions in order to produce much more complicated materials, and the best way to find the combinations is just to experiment yourself. Now you'll see that although our noise texture is quite detailed, it doesn't have very much contrast. The best way to increase contrast is to use a colour ramp node, which you'll find under Converter. I'm going to click and drag this colour ramp node, and I can either place it and then manually connect the links, or drag it over the existing link until it goes white, and then left clicking, and Blender will automatically create the links. Now to increase the contrast, I'm going to bring the black value up and the white value down. This will force whatever's coming in the input into a much more condensed gradient, which will make the output have much higher contrast. If you've ever used curves in Photoshop, then you've already seen a colour ramp, but you might not have known it. What we can also do with these textures is use one texture to control a field on another texture. So if we delete our colour ramp by clicking it and pressing Control X, Blender will automatically fix the links, and then do the same for the math node. And I'm going to delete the remaining two textures by left click and dragging to select them and then pressing X to delete. Now I'm going to create a brick texture node and connect the colour into the base colour of the principal shader. Now I'm going to create a noise texture which will be the controlling texture. I'll plug the factor of this into the scale of the brick texture. It'll start off being very distorted and you can barely tell that it's supposed to be a brick texture. To stop this distortion, we need to change the difference between the lowest value that it can be distorted by and the highest value, so we're going to return to the colour ramp node. I'll add a colour ramp between the noise and brick textures, and then bring the dark value up in luminance. Now the difference between the lowest and highest is much smaller, which means the distortion is much lower. However, the brick texture is scaled up too much, so it takes up too much of the screen. To scale it down, we need to actually increase the value that's going into the scale factor. To do this, we can insert a math node after the colour ramp, change its type to multiply, and then change the value to 5. We can decrease the distortion again by changing the luminance value to be closer to each other. This technique can be very useful if you want to make a wall look more natural, although of course you would make the colour ramp values much closer to each other in luminance, which would reduce the amount of distortion, as at the moment it's a little extreme to look realistic. Now we'll move on to a slightly different use of textures, controlling a field in a shader rather than a colour. I'm going to delete these textures by left clicking and dragging and then pressing X, and then I'm going to insert a noise texture. Instead of dragging the factor into the base colour, I'm going to drag it into the roughness. This is quite difficult to see off the bat, but if I move the light, then you can see that it is affecting it. To make it more pronounced, we can use another colour ramp node. By bringing the dark values up and the lighter values down, we can create an effect that looks like puddles. Because we've used procedural textures for these puddles, we can scale the puddle surface as much as we like with no loss in quality. We can also increase the detail. We can even add distortion, which will make it look like spilled oil rather than water. All in all, the node editor is an extremely powerful tool, and with a mixture of textures and shaders, you can create infinitely complex materials suited to your exact needs. The example shown in this tutorial only scraps the surface of the node editor and what it can do, so the best way to master it is just to practice making your own materials. If you've learned anything from watching this video, please consider sharing it, subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one, and comment if you have any requests for new tutorials you would like to see. Thanks for watching.